In 2017, there were some very interesting researchers that made the news. From solving the mystery of why children were dying in Bihar to a new definition of hypertension. Doctors on call talked about all these researches and much more. So today on this CRN special, we'll give you a quick recap on all the major researches of 2017. I'm Dr. Sonia Lal Gupta. And I'm Dr. Samir Gupta. And welcome to Doctors on Call. In January 2017, Lancet, which is one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world, came out with a study that described the association of acute toxic encephalopathy with the consumption of lychee in Muzaffarpur, Bihar. For over 20 years, the tinsel disease, or as they locally call it, chamki ki bimari, has been affecting the children of Muzaffarpur. The cause? Unknown. Researchers at the National Center for Disease Control in India and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, USA, initiated an investigation to assess this mystery illness, killing more than 40% children it affected. They divided these children into two groups, affected and not affected, and assessed their blood glucose levels, nutritional status, MRI brain, EEGs, timing of meals, and consumption of food items. And the cause of this disease, causing inflammation of the brain, remained a mystery. Now, a similar illness in Jamaica with the same symptoms was linked with the consumption of the ackee fruit that belongs to the same family as lychee. This fruit contained a toxin called hypoglycin A that was causing these symptoms. Now, when there is less glucose in the body, it breaks down the fat to produce more glucose. Hypoglycin A is a toxin that inhibits the body's ability to produce glucose from fats. These young children would eat the lychee fruit and then miss dinner. Since they were malnourished and had low glucose levels to begin with, late night the glucose levels would fall further and the toxin would not let the body produce glucose, leading to a severe fall in blood sugar called hypoglycemia. This sudden fall in glucose led to seizures and confusion in the children. Now in the hub and spoke pattern, all patients with a heart attack or ST elevation MI, also called STEMI, were sent to the bigger hub hospital for coronary angiography. Now with the preset model in place, a lot more people were able to get the proper treatment that led to improved survival. Now, if you take at STEMI programs that are there in the US and Europe, all patients with heart attacks are transported immediately to a hospital where primary PCI or cardiac catheterization can be done. In the STEMI India model, a hub hospital, which has a cath lab facility, is connected to multiple peripheral smaller hospitals where thrombolysis can be done. Now, what happens is that if a patient self presents or is transported to a hub hospital where there's a cath lab, then primary PCI is done as in the Western countries. If the patient presents to the spoke hospital in the periphery, and this spoke hospital is connected to the hub, then the patient is thrombolized there and then transported within three to 24 hours to the hub hospital for what we now call as the pharmaco-invasive treatment. Lifestyle management apart from medications are important for sugar control. It is estimated that one third of diabetics use alternative medicines. Yoga is one such form of alternative medicine that is now used all over the world. In a recent study published in the Journal of Preventive Medicine, a meta-analysis was done looking at the benefits of yoga in diabetes and the conclusion was impressive to say the least. In this study, they looked at comparisons of people who performed yoga regularly versus those who did not. Yoga was found to be successful in lowering HbA1c, fasting blood glucose and even controlling your sugar after a meal. People who performed yoga were also found to have a lower total cholesterol and lower triglycerides, lower LDL or bad cholesterol and higher HDL or good cholesterol. Practicing yoga even helped lower both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. People who practice yoga regularly had a lower body mass index or BMI as well as a lower waist to hip ratio. It basically means they lost weight. It also helped lower the stress hormone or cortisol. Interestingly, yoga helped control fasting blood glucose levels better in older people. 
These benefits were seen by doing an hour long session three days a week in just three months. With one in four Indians affected with hypertension or high blood pressure, this very well can be deemed as an epidemic. With one in four people in India diagnosed with hypertension or high blood pressure, this has reached epidemic proportions. If left untreated, high blood pressure, also called hypertension, is also responsible for 50% of the strokes and 25% of all heart diseases. After 14 years, the international societies have updated recommendations for the diagnosis and treatment of high blood pressure or hypertension. In this update, they emphasize the importance of recognizing and treating blood pressure aggressively. One of the most important changes has been the way we look at hypertension. Traditionally, if your blood pressure was consistently more than 140 over 90, you were deemed with a diagnosis of hypertension. But according to the new recommendation, if your blood pressure is more than 130 over 80, means you have hypertension. This means that many millions of people who previously thought that their blood pressure is borderline or even normal may now actually be called hypertensive. This is very important to understand as we have learned from multiple studies that some of the complications start even when you think your blood pressure is actually borderline. Lifestyle diseases are responsible for 61% of deaths in this country. According to the WHO, the most common risk factors are alcohol, tobacco, poor diet intake and lack of physical activity. This new study reveals multiple other factors that can increase the risk of lifestyle diseases. The report summed up about seven major lifestyle diseases. First, obesity. New triggers such as the presence of chemicals like DDT, bisphenol A, monosodium glutinate and arsenic in food were found to increase the risk of obesity apart from an unhealthy diet and lack of exercise. Mental health. This study revealed an increased intake of sugar has been associated with an increased risk of mental illness and higher levels of air pollution have been linked with Alzheimer's. Cancer. In this report, new triggers like household chemicals and cosmetics were pointed out that contain cancer-causing compounds. Heart disease. According to this report, depression causes a change in the heart rhythm and hence increases the risk of heart disease. Respiratory diseases. Global warming changes the pollen levels and the length of seasons, causing an increase in the swelling of the respiratory airways. This increases allergic and asthmatic attacks. Hormonal disorders. Exposure to pesticides and air pollution increases the risk of diabetes. Currently, this already affects every 12th person in India. Food allergies. Food allergies can affect up to 40 million people in India. This report has shown that there are 170 types of food causing allergic reactions. Better labeling of food has been suggested to help people identify the triggers. Apart from this, this report also stated that 30% of premature deaths are linked with air pollution. To know more about the impact of this report, we spoke to Vibha Varshnay. I think the government already knows that there is a problem. So in terms of air pollution, they should now take uh, more action against it. Uh, there have been instances when authority did not actually said that air pollution does not cause cancer or it does not affect health, it does not affect the lungs. So these, these mindsets have to change now because we have brought together all the, talk, the information that is there which actually proves the link between air pollution and ill health. Okay. 2017 was a great year for Doctors on Call. We spoke about various health issues and advancements in the field of medicine. And in 2018, we promised to bring you these health news right here on Doctors on Call. Only the facts, backed by scientific data. But let us remember one thing, as we embark on the new year, let us make an effort to be more healthy. You know, let us eat right, let us exercise and just overall make our mindset that you know what, I want to be more healthy. That's a great resolution. 
I'm totally in for that. And from the entire team of Doctors on Call, we wish you and your family a very, very happy and healthy new year. That's all for now. See you next week. Thank you.